Uh, Michael, we know that Harry Kane is not in Portugal tonight ahead of Tottenham's game in the Europa League Conference. Right, bring us up to date with the latest on that one. Right, well, Harry Kane is training in Enfield along with the majority of first-team players who beat Manchester City on Sunday. As things stand today, there is no fresh bid from what we understand. He is still keen to leave. I think Spurs fans understand that. He understands Tottenham want to get a good value for him. A gentleman's agreement means nothing if the value isn't near to what Spurs want. Does Kevin De Bruyne or Neymar leave their respective clubs with three years left for less? I read Daniel Levy is in a lose-lose situation. Why? Get a fee they demand or keep one of the best strikers in the world. Why should Daniel Levy accept a lower offer from one of the world's richest clubs? Harry Kane was the golden boot winner, Premier League playmaker of the season, a monumental loss to Spurs who will need replacing with not one, but potentially a number of players. 12 days to go. Spurs are looking to buy a striker to partner Kane. Where do they go if he leaves next week and Spurs run out of time? Why is this on Daniel Levy? History tells you players at Spurs usually want to leave, get their way. A highlight, Dimitar Berbatov, Gareth Bale. Both in the end went for huge fees. Both went on to win the lot. Now Manchester City have to offer something that would bring them to the table. He remains a Spurs player who's got to get back into the squad. He's a leader in that Spurs dressing room and he's the England captain. Wasn't the question, what's the latest? <laughs> that is the, <laughs> really that's the latest. What happened there? That's the latest. <laughs> that is the latest. He's training in Enfield. <laughs> uh, there is no fresh bid. I will uh -oh. say, I will say, the, 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 just one question I have, obviously, you are, you've been across this from right, is throughout, is surely the, the, the time, if Spurs were going to sell Harry Kane, is now, because we know the strike market is completely different next summer, surely the price that Tottenham can get this summer for Harry Kane is at its highest. But there hasn't been a bid yet which has come close to Daniel Levy talking. They're, if there's this gentleman's agreement, fine. But Kane does understand that he doesn't go for any discounts. Why would he go for less? This is the problem. And I get it from your point of view, your, what you're saying. The problem I'm worried for, and Nuno, who I think has been brilliant on this for the last couple of weeks, he's just spoken perfectly on this. Where does it leave him? He's ambitious. Spurs have won the opening match. Great. They played really, really well. It was a good time to play Manchester City. And as the season goes on, they're going to need their striker. If it's not Harry Kane, they're going to need at least one to come in. And I know time's running out, but that doesn't mean they should sell him for any less than his value. He's the Premier League top goal scorer and he was the top playmaker last season. The longer this goes on, the higher Harry Kane's value is because it gives Tottenham a shorter time to find a replacement. Exactly. So, you know, I, I get it. Why is, why is all the attention on Daniel Levy? It's because he holds all the cards. That's why the attention's on him. And I'm not saying with the criticism's fair or, the, or anything like that, but he, he does have the power in this situation. If he wants to cash in, he can effectively name his price or walk away. He is the cherry on the cake for Manchester City. For me, when I looked at them the other day, they've signed Jack Grealish, great. They've got great defenders a great goalkeeper. They are a Harry Kane from probably, potentially, winning the lot. And as I say, Spurs fans get it. They get it. 28. This is the summer. You've done it all at Tottenham. <laughs> we don't want it to go sour because it's going sour. I'm sorry, but behind you on the sofa, Jess is there and is just, she, she is mesmerised by your, your passionate <laughs> plea here. And also with a few giggles in there as well, I've got to admit. Uh, let us know what you think. Hashtag it's transfer very talk. It's very simple. <laughs> on Twitter. But Anton, uh, from the, that's the Tottenham side of things, which he's put very well. From yeah. the Manchester City f uh, side of things, at what point do they think, OK, well, it's not going to be him. We need a striker. We need to switch targets. Manchester City clearly want a world-class number nine right obviously we clearly even they've targeted harry kane but any organization any well-run organization won't just have one target now we know you know previously pep Guardiola had admitted you know we would have liked to sign Lionel messi last summer we didn't think he's available this summer we made alter alternate plans so they will have different options in their mind they'll have a backup list of strikers about who they go for and if you watched sunday's game as, as i know we all did around this table striker wasn't necessarily the problem for Manchester City. Farron Torres actually played quite well up front. The problem was uh, left back, central defence, hold midfield. It's not a complete squad, even though City looked fantastic at the end of last season, well, all throughout last season, really. But, you know, so you could argue that, look, they could reinvest that money somewhere else in the team and the team could walk away stronger. So it might not just be alternates up front they're looking at. They're
they might be looking at other places to strengthen in that team to make them better. Yeah, well, Errol's been in touch. He says, this guy, Michael Bridge, is a Spurs fan. He's so passionate about this Kane deal. Laugh out loud, he really doesn't want him to leave. I think you uh, hit the nail on the uh, head there. Oh, you don't want him to leave, oh, don't you? No, it's not about that. It's about getting <laughs> what he's worth. His value. He's 28. He signed a long-term contract. You don't give people discounts because time's running out. That's my point. That is my point on this. And that you, is my point. And you've made it, you've made it every very, to- very well. Every Tottenham fan would not begrudge him a move. We get it. We've gone from Champions League to Conference League in two years. There needs to be a rebuild and he's ready. That doesn't mean he should be gone on a discount. That's all I'm saying. Well, a lot of people are praising the way Nuno has, uh, has dealt with all this. And I think we've got some reaction from him over with Jess. Wow. Um, not really <laughs> sure where to go after that performance. I think Michael Bridge has had his Weetabix this morning. My goodness. Uh, yes, you mentioned Nuno. Um, and I, I feel for him a little bit. He's only been in the job for, what, a few weeks? And so far, uh, the majority of the questions he's had to answer are all about one man, Harry Kane. Uh, now, despite all that commotion around the situation, clearly Nuno and Kane are still in contact. They seem to be on good terms. They've even had breakfast together. He's our place, preparing himself. He trained uh, today and he's going to train tomorrow and again on Friday and joining the group. And this is how we operate. We don't, we don't, we don't really pay much attention to what's been said outside regarding the situation of Harry. Harry is our player, is one of the best players in the world and we are very lucky to have him. What we must be sure of is that when we decide to, to, to put a player on the pitch, we have to consider all the aspects, the fitness, the mental aspects, and we are here to support all the players equally. And Ari, of course, um, has all our support. And have you talked to him since Sunday, since this week? Have you talked to him, had a conversation with him? Like I said before, even today at breakfast, we had breakfast together. Well, those are the thoughts of the manager. No surprises as well that Kane's friend and teammate Ben Davies says he wants Kane to stay at the club. Probably one of the world's best strikers and we definitely want him as part of our team. Um, well, he's training with us now, but as far as anything else goes, completely out of my hands. But of course, having him in the team is, uh, is definitely better than not. And how often are you speaking with him? Are you talking to him regularly? Yeah, like as... As mates, more than anything else, look, I think it's probably a blessing when he gets to just chat with us, not about the whole business side of it and not about his future. So, um, yeah, it's, there's been no real chats about what's happening. So everyone's talking about Harry Kane, but we're actually yet to hear directly from Kane himself. But he has been active on social media. You remember a couple of weeks ago, he wrote about how he felt hurt with people questioning his professionalism. Well, yesterday he posted this, uh, a picture of himself in training with the caption, another session in the bank, even a little muscle arm emoji there as well. And I just wonder whether this is a change in tact for Harry Kane, speaking directly to the fans, letting them know that he's working hard and not shying away from his responsibilities but one thing I did notice Tottenham fans tell me what you think about this he didn't use the hashtag COYS come on you Spurs am I reading a bit too much into that I don't know guys well loads of people have been using the hashtag transfer talk and John Ryan says Michael Bridge you're spot on get a few quid in and bring a possibly two or three signings that we need there's Daz who says Michael Bridge smashing it telling everybody cold hard facts there is one though says Paul Paul Sullivan says as Bridgie woken up on the wrong side of the bed, but Ian Lewis has balances it out by saying Michael Bridge on Sky Sports News and the clapping emoji. Standing ovation for Michael Bridge from the Tottenham fans. I'm doing right. for that. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Thomas Tuchel is starting to shape his squad for the new season. We'll be discussing Chelsea.